The Electronics Information EI, module of the ASFOB contains 20 questions, which you will need to answer in 9 minutes. To achieve your 70%, you must answer 14 of the questions correctly. To achieve 80%, you must answer 16 questions correctly. Although the EI module is really one of overt knowledge, if you take your time and read the questions carefully, you should do well but don't spend too much time on any one question. Above all, pay attention to the exam alerts and make sure that you understand the information that the cram sheet outlines. Schematics During the course of this discussion on the fundamentals of electricity, we use schematics to illustrate the principles discussed. Schematics are line drawings that represent electronic, electrical, or mechanical systems using simplified graphic symbols to represent components and interconnection of those components. For the purposes of this chapter, we talk about only electrical circuits and their schematics. An electrical circuit is a path through which electricity flows. This path contains one or more components or devices and has a load, something that is using the electricity, at the end of the circuit. Electricity flows through the circuit when the path is complete, closed, and is connected to an energy source. However, an open circuit is one that has an incomplete or interrupted path so that electricity cannot flow all the way through it. An entire circuit has one or more schematic drawings, and each component within that circuit has a drawing representation. In each of the following sections, we discuss the most common electronic and electrical components and their respective schematic symbols. Within each section, you have an opportunity to become more familiar with schematic details and the principles behind the drawings. Principles of Electricity In the general science portion of this book, you learned that atoms comprise all matter, including air, and that an atom consists of three distinct particles. Positively charged particles, or protons. Negatively charged particles, or electrons. Neutrally charged particles, or neutrons. Protons and neutrons make up the nucleus of an atom, whereas electrons maintain a circular orbit around the nucleus. Sound familiar? Figure 6.1 illustrates the basic structure of an atom. This illustration, which is of a copper atom, is a little different from one you might have seen. In your science book, because it shows more than one layer or shell of electron orbits. The outermost shell of electrons is the most loosely bound to the nucleus. For that reason, atoms can more easily exchange electrons from the outer shell. Figure 6.1 Atomic Structure When we talk about electricity, we are primarily concerned with the movement of free electrons through a given medium. A free electron is one that is not in a tightly bound orbit around a nucleus. When a conductive material receives an external electrical charge, the electrons gain enough energy to leave the outermost shell of the atom and become free electrons. The most basic principle that govern that energy, which we call electricity, is that of Ohm's law, which entails three primary measurements, current, voltage, or electromotive force, and resistance. The following sections discuss each of these constituents and then provide a discussion on how to use Ohm's law to find these properties. Current Within an electrical conductor, a medium that transfers electricity, such as an electrical wire, there are billions of free electrons at rest, until an outside force imposes an electrical force on them, they will remain at rest. However, once you apply an electrical source to the electrons, they will begin to move. You can think of electron movement, or electrical flow, like that of a river. By looking at a landscape, you can determine which way a river will flow namely, from a higher point to a lower point, according to the laws of gravity. When you think of electricity, you can also determine which way the electrons will flow, although the laws of magnetism, not the laws of gravity, govern the flow of electrons. Just as gravity dictates that water will flow downhill, the inherent charge of the electrons will cause them to move in a predefined direction, which is away from the voltage source toward the load. The electron's electrical charge acts like a magnetic field in which negative charges repel each other, creating the movement within the electrical field. That movement is called current. You measure the strength, or rate of movement of the current, in amperes, A, and you represent this force by the symbol I for intensity. 
You may also see amperes abbreviated to simply amps. The discussion on Ohm's law, later in this chapter, explains how to find this value. Exam alert. Current is the rate of the flow of electrons and is measured in amperes A. Different loads, or draws on the electrical system, require differing amounts of current. For devices with an induction motor, the startup draw is more than the normal operating draw. You can read more about induction later in this chapter in the section Inductors, Inductance, and Inductive Reactants. The electric company sets up most households for 100 amp, also stated 100A, service, which is sufficient for the load that most homes draw. In any given electrical application, there are two forms of electrical current, direct current and alternating current. Read on to learn more about them. Exam alert. Make sure you know that direct current, DC, and alternating current, AC, are the two types of electricity. Direct current. Direct current, DC, is the flow of electrons in only one consistent direction, usually maintained by a constant voltage source, such as a battery. Direct current is most like water flow, as water flows in only one direction, according to the force exerted upon it, as figure 6.2 illustrates. Figure 6.2 Direct Current Electron Flow Because transmission lines have a constant resistance, a lower current will decrease the power loss in it. However, by its nature, direct current cannot easily travel great distances without experiencing considerable power loss. This is because direct current has only one current value and one voltage value, and its input voltage cannot be increased without also increasing the current proportionally. In addition, transmitting a direct current with sufficient voltage to carry the transmission for the desired distance is not feasible in most cases. However, today's technology is introducing new ways to carry the extremely high DC voltage, higher than that. For high voltage AC transmissions, by using rectifiers and inverters to change DC to AC and vice versa. A battery is the most common source of DC power. Whether the battery is the small, AAA size that you put in your television's remote control, or a large, industrial battery, the principle is the same. The battery develops a lack of electrons at the positive terminal, and develops a surplus at the negative terminal. The number of surplus electrons indicates the voltage level of the battery. Because electrons are negatively charged and repel each other, and because electrons in a DC circuit travel in only one direction, when a load is applied to the circuit, the surplus electrons leave the crowded. Hostile environment of the negative terminal and travel toward the more magnetically friendly, positive terminal to create electricity. This manner of inducing voltage is called electromotive force, EMF. Figure 6.3 illustrates the constant current flow and voltage in a DC circuit. Plus 12V. E.